Hey everybody, welcome on our channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto was the maelstrom and got harem and bleach. Part 1. Huge shout out to Uncle Joe for this story. If you are new on the channel, don't forget to subscribe our channel and like the video too. So without wasting any more time. Let's start the story. Naruto grimaced as he ran through the forest following the sounds of a woman's screams, he didn't rightly remember how long ago he had staked out this forest, as his domain was at 500 years ago, 550. It didn't matter, in his 21st year he had gained the ability to use all of QB's chakra, the demonic chakra to this day continued to increase his chakra reserves, and the side effects of using it were considerably lessened. QB's soul was in his stomach with it had come unexpected side effects. Immortality and eternal youth, he didn't know if he was invincible, but he clearly remembered being decapitated at least once before. He dismissed his thoughts as he caught sight of a clearing, and what was in that clearing filled him with rage. Yuki whimpered in fear as the five men surrounded her in the guardian forest, she knew why they had taken her, she was considered the most beautiful maiden in the entire village. Long silky black hair, dark brown eyes angelic face skin like ivory and very generous curves, 18 and a virgin turning down men left right and center, and now her virtue was going to be taken by force by some disgusting old evil bastards, what frightened her most was the fact they were in the guardian forest. Her family believed the old tales that an ancient being lived in the forest and would kill all who violated its sanctuary, though it did take pity on people. She remembered when she was a kid a group of boys had gotten lost in the forest, they were found three days later perfectly health and claiming they had been fed and led out of the forest by an angel. Whereas a few who made it out of the forest after deliberately trespassing claimed they saw a demon or some kind of fierce beast or animal that would growl from the shadows in warning and then attack any who persisted. So that's why she froze when she heard a rustle of leaves and a growl coming from behind her. Hey, hey Carl was it sound me just heard. Asked one of the doomed men, let's face they're dead already they just don't know it yet, I dunno probably some animal forget it, I wanna make this pretty little thing scream. Yuki's eyes widened and tears began to stream down her face, she froze when she heard a whisper close your eyes and keep them closed she didn't know why, but she obeyed instantly. She felt something large move past her as she listened to what was going on around her. Hey woes this guy. Yeah beat it blondie. I am your death spoke a voice it was so quiet and calm and deadly, yet held a deep and mature quality that Yuki found slightly arousing even in her current situation. What the heck you can't say shit like that I'll kill yo ah. Yuki almost opened her eyes as the screaming began, she heard her attackers try to run, but they stopped suddenly followed by screams and wet flesh sounds as they fell to the ground obviously dead. She was shivering in fear and screamed when arms wrapped around her hoisting her into a bridal carry. The events of the night were too much as she passed out unknowingly in her savior's arms. Naruto grinned slightly as he carried the unconscious woman in his arms whom she's 18 I guess, and she smells nice pure, my guess would be she's a virgin what you think fuzz but. Well I think you could have some fun with her before we leave, I finally figured out how to do that world teleportation thing, so we can do it tomorrow or whenever. Um sounds good, oh we're home chat later fox. Yuki woke up remembering her horrible nightmare, then she looked around where the hell. She said out loud as she realized she was in apparently nicely furnished cave. Oh you're in my home. Yuki screamed whipped around a froze, she stared and stared at the man who had spoke not realizing the slight amount of drool making its way down her chin or the growing dampness between her legs. She liked what she saw, the man behind her had to be a solid 6 foot 6 maybe even taller and appeared to be about 20 or 21 in age, he had a chiseled face that was extremely handsome, however six long perfectly positioned scars on his cheeks gave his face a feral quality. He had long blonde hair with blood red tips that reached down to the small of his back and electric blue eyes. He wore a sleeveless vest which was open in the front, displaying an impressive set of muscles. Yuki snapped out of it not because he said something, but because her body made her do something, moan with desire. She was utterly mortified when the man chuckled seemingly pleased with her reaction. You okay now Haim, no lasting damage I hope. She shook her head not trusting her voice. In case you're wondering what happened, I saved you from those men, her eyes widened as she stared at his face, not catching a hint of deception, why did I save you? It's quite simple really this is my forest it took her a few seconds to register what he had said, and then her eyes almost bulged out of their sockets. She had been saved by the famous and fabled guardian. She passed out. She awoke again a few minutes later and stared at the man who was currently facing away from her, okay what to do. Just then her inner pervert came into being let's reward him a. Eh? Well, what? I can't do that I'm a virgin. Yeah so what better way to lose it than to a totally hunk of a man who most likely has lots and lots of experience in having sex. I'm not sure. Get off your fast and f him girl. Yuki nodded slowly to herself, she stood and walked over to him she wrapped her arms around his neck and leaned against his broad back. 
She let her instincts and desires take control as she licked his ear and whispered, I think you need a reward Mr. Hero. Naruto grinned to himself as the girl propositioned him eagerly, he turned slightly and grinned at her. The next thing Yuki knew she was completely naked and being lowered to the floor by an equally as naked savior. Her eyes closed and she moaned loudly as he suckled on her neck, leaving a red shiny love bite behind, he chuckled to himself at her little moans and sighs. Yuki moaned loudly as Naruto made her feel incredible, this was nothing compared to her own hands, not even that one time she had lesbian fex with her best friend measured up to this. She then realized for a split second she didn't know his name while wait please. What's wrong? We don't even know each other's names. Ahahaha oh man he kinda dumb how well I'm Naruto. Yuki. Lemon happened. Thanks for this Yuki Haim. Yuki smiled slightly do you think I could visit sometimes? Naruto sighed sadly making Yuki worry. No because I'm leaving this world tonight, Yuki's eyes began to fill with tears until Naruto kissed her. I I don't want you to die Naruto. I'm not dying merely leaving this world, I've lived in this world since the day I was born which was about 2000 years ago Yuki, I'm tired of this world I'm going to a new one to have new adventures, Yuki smiled sadly at him, then kissed him once again. She smiled at him and began to walk down to her village, not turning back knowing somehow that would make it harder on both of them. Hey kid before you leave we should change your age, make you younger eh? How much younger? Let's say 15. Okay. Naruto grimaced as a slight pain went through his body, and he lost a couple of inches in height, Naruto sighed as he drew out a giant seal and charged it with chakra, he stepped into the center and activated it, there was flash of white, and he was gone. Naruto groaned it felt like he was floating, he opened his eyes and uttered a single sentence, oh he was at least a hundred feet of the ground in midair. He screamed as he neared the ground and impacted with a loud crunch. The black cat walked leisurely through a forest seemingly in no hurry to reach her destination wherever that might be, suddenly a flash of white light in the sky startled her, she looked at where it had been through a gap in the trees and was surprised what looked like a person falling from it the person began to scream and even from where she was almost a kilometer away, she could hear the crunch of impact and it made her wince. The black cat began to run, I don't know what the hell you call it with a cat a gallop. In the direction of the hem landing, she soon arrived at the edge of a clearing where the person had landed and was slightly shocked to see a tall blonde teenager getting out of a crater, seemingly unfazed by a landing that would kill normal people. The strange teen looked around for a moment before beginning to talk to himself and apparently getting a response. Hmm better explore AQB. The boy nodded to himself and made a weird T-shape with his fingers, he then frowned, dropped his hands and tried again, his eyes glazed over before opening wide in shock, what the hell do you mean I've got no chakra? What the hell is Riatsu? Oh the blonde seemed to phase out again as the cat watched on in amazement. Meanwhile inside Naruto's mind. So you're telling me when we got here all my chakra was converted to this Riatsu stuff which has to do with my spirit, so it's basically spirit energy, and that you still have chakra, but any of it that leaks over will convert to Riatsu, but I still heal thanks to your chakra. Yep. And I still use the tails. I dunno but do you really need to? Probably not, but why did it convert? Most likely it's because chakra is your world equivalent of personal energy or whatever you want to call it, this world's is this spirit stuff so to fit in it must have converted over, don't know how, but it did so don't worry about it. Naruto nodded to himself as he tuned back into the world he sensed something behind him, he whipped round and jumped a good 20 feet back in a single jump as he was faced by some monster with a white bone-like face. The cat watched as the blonde seemed to have a conversation within his own mind, the feline hissed when a large white-faced creature appeared behind the blonde boy. The kid snapped out of it and turned around facing the creature, the cat watched in some surprise, as the boy leapt over 20 feet back with pure muscle power. Naruto watched the creature warily as it stared at him, it spoke. You have much energy I'm going to enjoy eating your soul, his eyes widened at the thought of it eating his soul, and this gave it the chance to strike. It launched itself at him, and he just managed to dive out of the way by pure reflex he kicked out sending the creature flying. It landed heavily and slowly got back up growling. The kill it you have to smash its mask. He didn't know who had said that as it had definitely not been QB so he decided to follow its advice. The monster launched itself at him and he got ready to strike. The cat had decided to at least give the kid a chance on his own to fight off the creature, the cat watched as the kid readied himself and the monster launched itself at him. The cat watched as the kid launched a punch at the monster's mask and almost fell over in shock when the kid's fist blasted almost straight through the mask. The guy was just standing there with half his arm inside the monster's face. Naruto smirked to himself as he drove his fist straight through the creature's mask, he didn't need Tsunade Bachin's version of strength he had his own. The creature screamed and seemed to fade away into dust, the voice spoke again well that was unexpected, he whipped round and spotted the voice's owner a cat. The cat? Yes. 
well wouldn't be the first time, what's your name? The cat face faulted at the fact this wasn't the first time he'd encountered a talking animal there, is no way this guy's met any of my family, is there? Ah uh, it's Iruchi Shingen. Wow well, not even Gamakichi has a second name. Do. Oh well you see uh, are you a summon creature? Uh no I've never heard of summons before. Oh then what are you, can all cats in this world talk, and what was that thing? Iruchi sweat dropped at his obvious excitement and enthusiasm, uh no I'm special, and that was a hollow the boy suddenly froze and gave her a sly look, I bet you're special what do you really look like? Yuruchi froze and stared at the boy in shock, he had seen through her spirit form. She smirked inwardly she would figure out exactly who this boy was later, for now she would surprise him, she changed. Naruto watched as the cat changed, and suddenly a woman was standing before him, she was tall, slightly taller than him at his current age, with chocolate-colored skin, yellow-colored eyes and dark purple hair. He then noticed she was naked, and his eye widened taking in her near-flawless skin large breasts with dark fipples, a neatly trimmed patch of hair above her entrance, he smiled. Iruchi smirked as she watched a teenager in front of her examine her appearance, she grinned in anticipation of a sudden large and powerful nosebleed when she saw his eyes widen. However she was also taking him into appraisal, he was tall taller than her at least 5 foot 9, maybe 5 foot 10, when he stopped growing he would tower over her, he had long blonde hair with red tips that reached his shoulders and thin lines on his cheeks that looked almost like whiskers. His eyes were in deep blue, a vibrant and incredible color they seemed to look into her soul, all in all he was damn if he was older I'd be all over him. Her eyes widened when he smiled, there was a sudden rush of movement, Yuruchi gasped as she was slammed into a tree pin there by the kid's body. He was looking right in her eyes, she was mesmerized temporarily, she would later berate herself, ashamed that someone as powerful and skilled as her got lost in a handsome teen's eyes so lost in fact that she didn't notice him lifting her legs and placing them around his waist. She would also later learn that he was no teen. Thoroughly aware of the beautiful naked woman he had pinned to a tree Naruto smiled it was time to play. Want to play? He asked with a slight growl to his voice as he pressed himself up against her, she gasped, then glared at him, obviously thinking that two could play at this game. His eyes widened when she disappeared. Iruchi smiled she wasn't the goddess of flash for nothing, she appeared behind him, while mulling over what to do in her mind he's fast and strong, looks 15, but by the look in his eyes, he's a hell of a lot older, he's got one hot body, and is definitely playful, most likely experienced in both battle and other matters, he's not a shinigami that's for sure. He's not evil I can sense that much, though there is a darkness in his soul oh hell, why not I haven't had sex in a long time she appeared behind him, trailed a hand across his cheek while nibbling slightly on his ear when she realized she didn't know his name. What's your name handsome? Naruto Uzumaki she grinned as he turned and kissed her full on the lips. She deepened the kiss already noting he was good at it, she gasped in surprise when her tongue ran over the larger than usual canines he had. She moaned when his hands lightly traveled down her bare back and began to gently massage her face. She pulled back and gestured at him off he grinned and quickly stripped, Yuruchi couldn't help herself as she stared. Going down from his wide well-muscled chest to his rock-hard abs and then below the waist. Her eyes widened and she licked her lips subconsciously as she observed the heavy artillery before her. Lemon happened. He was surprised to say the least, very few women enjoyed their own taste in his experience, he'd met quite a few, but only two in his first 50 years of life Anko and Ino, but then again, they had enjoyed each other's as well, good times. Naruto's eyes widened as he was pulled to earth by a certain not yet completely satisfied ex-Shinigami captain, at first he was on top of her, but she rolled him over and ended up straddling him. No words were spoken as a chocolate-colored hand wrapped around his shaft and guided him to her entrance. He slipped inside her deliciously tight warmth. Iruchi cried out to the heavens as they both began to move, she'd had sex before, but never like this, she'd never been so filled before. She would fall to meet him and then she would rise, he would then rise to meet her and fall again. This was repeated over and over, Yuruchi didn't really know how long they had been at it, as she had lost track of time. She felt it an enormous amount of pressure was building up in her stomach, she screamed as it was released. She cried out again as Naruto came adding even more to the sensation she was feeling, he groaned underneath her as she collapsed on top of him. Yuruchi laid her head on his broad sweaty chest, as the both gave great heaving breaths, trying to calm their rapidly beating hearts, she felt his chest rumble, as he chuckled wow, not many can keep up with me Nikoheim she smiled at the nickname. Naruto ran his fingers through his lover's hair and heard a peculiar sound, he smiled when he realized Yuruchi was purring, I'd greatly love to continue this until you won't be able to walk right for a week, but I believe we both need a place to stay, so we can sit somewhere warmer private and comfortable, so I can tell my story, and Yuyoshi nodded at this logic. She moved off Naruto, but not before sliding her breasts across his chest and stomach, an obvious reminder of what he was missing out on for now he thought with a dry chuckle. 
he stood and got dressed, he spotted Yuruchi changing into her cat form, who then gave him a look that obviously said follow me he smiled. Naruto's face creased slightly in a frown when he heard a giggle in his mind, long ago to get the fox to leave him alone, unless it was truly important, or he was contacted Naruto had cut him a deal. He gave the fox the temporary ability to see, feel, smell, taste and hear all he did when he had sex, however sometimes this was cut to just sight, if Naruto felt a real attachment or connection with the woman he was about to make love to as in this case. Naruto whistled tunelessly as he looked down from a hillside near a large graveyard at Kurakura town, a part of a city called Tokyo, he was very glad that wherever he was they spoke his own language called Japanese here. He had been lucky he guessed, he followed the catwoman down a steep hill, the town was complex and large with so many strange things, but he supposed he would have to get used to them for now he settled on ignoring all the different things he wanted to gawk at, so he could look normal and fit in. Since it was night now it didn't generally matter but it was good practice. Naruto was curious as they approached an out-of-the-way shop with a sign reading Urahara shop, he watched as Yuruchi changed into her human form and knocked on the door, she kept knocking until footsteps were heard. The little kid about 9 to 10 years old with red hair opened the door, he had a grumpy half-asleep look on his face, but immediately awakened upon seeing the stark naked woman before him, he did the only thing he could do he fainted. Naruto chuckled as Yuruchi stepped over the boy seemingly without a care in the world, she took some clothes off a rack, but didn't put them on however, and gestured for Naruto to follow her. He stepped over the boy and closed the door leaving the kid where he was. They stepped into a small room near the back of the shop which was sparse except for a chair, a small desk and a single bed. Isuke Urahara the owner of this shop leaves this room opening cause I stop by, sit down and spill your story, I hope it's good I'd hate to have to kill someone who's so good under the covers. Naruto chuckled and sat in the chair. Iruchi watched him expectantly, he sighed and began his tale. He started with how he wasn't from this world, once he was sure he had her partially convinced of this he moved on to his real age, and then finally his life history including everything such as the QB. Iruchi had great difficult picking her jaw off the floor, the sheer insanity of his story was astonishing, not even the whole crossing worlds, and being 2000 years old, had phased her that much. She was after all an ex-Shinigami, and knew people who were well over a thousand years old she was well over 500, though she never did count it. The crossing worlds thing was a bit more difficult to swallow, but she had decided it was believable and possible. However his life story, his accomplishments and his burdens were the hardest part to believe. However this was not the most insane thing to her, oh no what was most insane was that she believed every single thing he had said. She groaned as she laid back trying to absorb it all tell you what Foxy, you strip come over here and well entertain each other for a few hours, and in the morning I'll teach you about this world. Naruto nodded as he quickly took off his shirt and pants and walked over to her. Iruchi would have the best night of sleep she's had for centuries. The say Urahara was surprised at finding Jinta Hanakari passed out in the main shop was a slight understatement. He was just about to kick the boy awake when he muttered something in his sleep about a beautiful naked black woman, Yuruchi he immediately forgot about the boy and sprinted to the shop's spare room. He was ecstatic at seeing his old friend again, he pushed open the door about to bellow a hello when he froze. Yes Yuruchi was there, and she was in her human form sleeping she was completely naked with the sheets only covering from her hips down. This was not what made him freeze she was lying on top of the chest of a tall well-muscled blonde teen who was equally as naked and was currently smiling at him as if nothing was wrong. He gave the blonde a smile and a wink as he sat himself down in the single chair. The blonde gave Yuruchi a shake and she woke up groggily, if you want another round give me a few minutes I'm still sore from last night he chuckled while well, Urahara contained his laughter. Well okay, I just hope you don't mind an audience her eyes snapped open and she glared around the room, spotting Yurahara, she relaxed lying back down on the teen's chest and nuzzling into it, purring contentedly well well Yuruchi, I didn't know you were a pedophile to his surprise the woman snorted. He's older than you Yurahara. The blonde in the bucket had eyes widened at this, he threw a curious glance at the blonde. Name's Naruto Yuzumaki, I'll tell you my story, but on one condition. Name it. Get me a cool hat like that except in black and white, Yuruchi looked at her lover in surprise, while Yurahara roared with laughter, Naruto tried to get up, but Yuruchi was holding him down, I need to get up you know she smiled and curled up on him much like a cat. No you don't since I'm very comfortable here Yurahara watched and waited to see how Naruto would handle this. To his great surprise a mischievous glint appeared in his eye, and a very fox-like grin appeared on his face, he lifted a hand and suddenly spanked the woman lying on top of him. Yuruchi's eyes widened as his hand connected sharply with her rear end, while Yurahara's jaw dropped, he spanked her again, and she jumped off him hissing in anger. Yurahara's jaw dropped further, and his eyes bugged out when Naruto growled and snarled at the catwoman. Yuruchi was mortified that the man she had come to greatly like had spanked her, she hissed something she only did when she was truly and royally pissed off. 
To her surprise and slight fear he began to growl at her, he snarled slightly a fear look passing over his face. It was then she noticed his pupils were slightly slitted, she then sensed that he was emitting an aura of dominance something she had never felt before, she fraught against it as best she could but failed. Irihara watched in shock as the two people hissed and growled in an obvious war for dominance like any two animals, he was however completely shocked when Yuruchi was the first to bow her head. Naruto leaned over and kissed her, while well, the significance of this act was lost, and Urahara and would no doubt be lost on almost every other person on any planet in existence. It was not lost on Yuruchi, being a person closely tied to a kind of animal on every level, her personality, the way her emotions and mind worked, and in a few ways the way her body reacted instinctively. They had fought for dominance the way two strong animals would in a pack, however this was for the position in the relationship. Iruchi to her shame, surprise and slight arousal, had been the one to cave, the one to submit. However when Naruto had kissed her, he had said quite clearly they were equals. This made her extremely happy, she grinned making a silent promise to reward Naruto later, she dived under the covers, hiding her naked form from sight, Naruto dressed and sat on the edge of the bed and retold his tale. She watched and giggled every now and then at Urahara's almost permanent shocked expression from Naruto's story. Urahara just couldn't believe it, mostly it was the fact Yuruchi believed him, he introduced Naruto to the others who worked in and inhabited the store at times, they had figured it would be easiest to just say he traveled from another world was old and powerful. The morning did have some shocks however, Naruto had been freaked out by a blender, blew up a microwave and started a fire with a toaster, Jinta had been unable to look at Yuruchi all day, and when Yururu had mentioned it, he had begun to hit her and pull her hair. However everyone had frozen in shock and in one case terror as Naruto yanked Jinta up by the front of his shirt and stared in his eyes. Yuruchi watched as Naruto hauled the abusive boy off his feet and glared at him, why did you attack her? She made fun of me. Yuruu please repeat what you asked him. I, I asked Jinta why he wasn't looking at Yuruchi. Yep sounds like making fun to me, so why did you attack her? I don't know. Bad answer to everyone's surprise who had been expecting violence, he merely hit the boy hard on the head, making him yelp hopefully you learned two things today, never ever disrespect women, secondly never hurt or attack people without a reason, do you understand? Jinta nodded, Naruto smiled and ruffled the boy's hair. He turned seeing everyone's curious expressions, he needed to learn respect, Yururu the girl looked up from her depression, obviously believing she had caused the altercation. You need to learn to stand up to bullies, I'll show you how, Kisu please stand up the odd eccentric man stood up curious as to what would happen, this is how you deal with bullies Yururu he turned and kicked Yurahara right between the legs. Yururu's eyes widened Jinta and Tessai both covered their own important objects, Yuruchi was laughing madly. That's for letting this go on, Yurahara nodded absently as he lay curled up on the floor crying silently. He turned and faced both Jinta and Yururu I need you two to do me a favor, teach me about your world okay. They nodded and after an hour of learning the ins and outs of the store they headed out into the street. Five hours later of learning about cars, buses, planes, toasters and the joys of pizza, Naruto had decided he liked this world a hell of a lot. Of course a certain dark-skinned, voluptuous and willing catwoman had absolutely nothing to do with it pfft right. Naruto sighed slightly as he returned to the shop and settled down in the soul chair in his and Yuruchi's room, Yurahara and Yuruchi had said they needed to tell him something. He sat and watched as the catwoman stretched in a very feline manner while lying on the bed, Urahara was leaning against the wall he supposed it was fair, they had to take in he was from another world and was a 2,000-year-old ninja, with a currently 12,000-year-old demon locked within his gut. However contrary to popular belief which is everyone's but the original designer of the seal, the fox was not actually locked up in Naruto's body, he was locked inside the boy's pure soul. Naruto pondered the idea of a large force of Shinigami instead of just one, he decided to accept it. Well what do I do now with my life? Urahara spoke this time since you're 15 you should go to school, I'll set you up with the necessary paperwork and you can work here in your spare time to earn money so you can own your own apartment. There is also a way for us to unlock your powers, I can feel it now for some strange reason you have Shinigami powers instead of just regular spiritual powers, but that will come much later I have to prepare for it. So it will take about a day to set you up at school and I can fix you with an apartment for now. Naruto was stunned at his generosity, why are you gonna do this for me Kisuke? Two reasons, one Yuruchi would most likely hurt me very badly if I didn't Naruto snickered, well said woman grinned second, I'm very curious about you, about how powerful you will be, and about how you will work out as a Shinigami, let's face it, I'm a scientist at heart and you make me curious, so I'm gonna figure you out and do what it takes to figure you out. Naruto nodded and a maniac grin spread across his face, which was eerily similar to a eye patch wearing slightly insane Shinigami captain. I am really growing to like this world. The other two laughed. 
but Chigo Kurosaki frowned, it was turning out to be just a normal day in his life with his father trying to assault him and getting beat up for it and then eating breakfast with his sisters and heading to school. However he had noticed someone his age that he had never seen before dressed in a school uniform hanging around, and Orahim was blabbering about some new person in the apartment across from her, who was apparently a new student. He was frowning because he had sensed something different about the one glance he got of the new guy, something powerful. He didn't know what it was, but he guessed it was spiritual power like he had, ability to see ghosts and all that. He ignored Kigo's posturing about something as someone else entered the room, he glanced towards them, but turned to fully face them, as he realized it was the new kid. The new guy was tall about as tall as Ichigo himself, he was broad-shouldered and looked fit like a fighter. Ichigo noted he moved like a fighter too, stealthy quite fast and graceful he was a blonde, but his hair had red tips and he had a set of weird faint scars on his cheeks. The guy smiled and walked up to Ichigo and his little group of Kigo Chad and Mizuro and held out his hand staring Ichigo right in the eyes hello I'm new here who are you guys. Ichigo grunted my name's Ichigo Kurosaki a weird look flashed across Naruto's face, what going to make fun of my name? Wouldn't dream of it I'd be a hypocrite my name is Naruto Uzumaki. Maelstrom huh? Got that right. Strawberry Ichigo growled, but he suppressed a grin at the twinkle in Naruto's eye, whatever fish cake Naruto laughed and was quickly introduced to the rest of the gang. Ichigo had been greatly surprised at his reaction to Chad, he'd looked up into Chad's face and said simply you're not so big, and then shook his hand. Itsuki walked in feeling very good after smacking Chizuru around after she tried to molest Orahim once again, she spotted someone she didn't recognize and figured it was the new guy Orahim mentioned. He looked over his shoulder at her since he was talking with Kigo and gave her a dazzling smile, this large smile combined with deep blue twinkling eyes made her stomach do backflips. She fraught down a blush and merely smiled in return, she froze when a strange look came into his eyes but dismissed it. Orahim walked in and spotted the new boy she approached hello Naruto the boy turned and beamed at her well, if it isn't my new neighbor Orahim wasn't it? She nodded and repressed the urge to touch the marks on his cheeks. She giggled and began to chat to him about different things, neither noticed the astonished look sent Naruto's way, because not only was he paying complete attention to Orahim's ramblings, he had also agreed to try her cooking at lunch. Only Tatsuki noticed that Naruto was staring in her face not at her chest, unfortunately Chizuru walked in just then. Itsuki growled and got ready to move as Shizuru grabbed Orahim and dragged her backwards while screaming at Naruto about knowing his place or something like that. However she froze when she saw the look on his face. The red-headed lesbian was livid some blonde idiot was talking to her Orahim. She was trying to comfort Orahim while ignoring her struggles when she heard a low growl. The Chigo had dismissed the red head when he heard a growl his head snapped towards Naruto who was snarling silently, he moved. Fast. He walked right up into Chizuru's face glaring down at her the red head was obviously terrified as Naruto approached her. Ichigo's eyes widened when Naruto raised his fist. Chizuru was shaking in fear Orahim forgotten when the blonde raised his fist, she closed her eyes expecting a savage blow, but only felt a small and irritating flick o her forehead. Her eyes snapped open looking up into ice cold blue go she fled to a seat on the other side of the room. Itsuki and Ichigo were impressed with how he had used his presence along with body language to terrify Chizuru, fighters knew how to do that. Chad was thinking something along the same lines. The rest of the class was split between awe and terror. Soon the teacher arrived and the class sat giving occasional glances Naruto's way, who'd acknowledge with wave to the boys and a wink to the girls, which ended up with a female populace blushing heavily by the end of lunch. Ichigo was frowning more than usual, Chad had invited Naruto along with their group for lunch which Ichigo didn't mind, but Naruto had been followed by Orahim and Tatsuki, which was slightly annoying but easily tolerable, however soon the entire of the two girls group was joining the boys on the roof. However entertainment had apparently arrived. Tatsuki watched fearfully as Orahim pulled a thing out of her backpack and broke some of it off, handing the smaller piece to Naruto. She snickered slightly when one of the girls mentioned all the food must go to Orahim's breasts, which Tatsuki like all the other girls, was slightly jealous of her chest size, now she would never admit it. She watched in surprise as Naruto popped the piece of food. In his mouth and chewed slowly then froze. Ichigo's eyes widened as Naruto ate some of Orahim's food, he had done that once repeat once and figured it would be best if Naruto learned from experience. However he along with everyone else's jaws, dropped when he swallowed and said wow, that's good can I have some more please Orahim sama Orahim blushed at the title. While others watched in awe and disgust as Naruto ate another large chunk of whatever it was Orahim had made. They eventually got used to it no matter how disturbing, however trouble was brewing its name Kigo. Kigo was muttering under his breath about the unfairness of the world when he decided to do something about it. Food was sent flying when he leapt up screaming and pointing a finger at Naruto who the hell do you think you are? Huh? 
Everyone was staring at Kigo in shock as his outburst continued to do you think you are turning up here and trying to have your way with all these pretty girls. I'm not having my way with them unless they want me to that is Naruto replied in a calm voice while smiling slightly, Kigo growled as a couple of girls blushed. However before he could continue Naruto spoke again, you don't need to worry Kigo, I'm not some random lecher, plus I think I've already got a girl it's just not official, yet everyone froze. Several girls including Orihim and Tatsuki to their own shock were very disappointed to hear he was already with a girl, Kigo turned from righteous fury to lecherous curiosity. So this girl what is she like, how far have you gotten with her eh? He sidled up to Naruto who grinned mischievously. She's fantastic tons of fun to be around and very playful, and you ask how far I've gotten with her right? Kigo nodded and Naruto smiled. Well I'm not a virgin if that's what you're asking. The reactions were unique, the girls froze Tatsuki dropped her drink and Orihim almost choked on her food, Kigo fell over, while Ichigo sprayed his drink all over Mizuro, who spluttered and choked while trying to avoid getting sprayed. Chad just stared, Naruto chuckled, took a sip of a can of soft drink, and said, I'm not lying and laughed again. The others soon recovered. Tatsuki asked a simple question what do your parents say about this? Nothing I'm an orphan Tatsuki looked down in embarrassment obviously sorry, but she looked up when she heard a gasp. Jealousy spiked into her when she saw Orihim hugging Naruto her more than ample breasts pressing up against his arm. He gave her a small smile it's alright I'm fine with it, lived with my guardian up until a while ago and moved into my own apartment which is right across from Himes here. No one asked any more serious questions of the blonde, they all began to chat with each other Naruto and Ichigo, occasionally swapping barbed remarks at each other. Oh yeah I'm really liking this world. Naruto grinned as he sat back, only a few minutes more to go at lunch. It was his first day at school and he'd made a bunch of friends. He could already tell they were damn good people. So Naruto, said a voice. The blonde looked over at Tatsuki. This girl you're with, was she the one who took your virginity? Everyone stopped and looked over. Nope was his simple reply. The world froze over. What? You heard me, she wasn't the one who I lost my virginity to. It was my first girlfriend back in my hometown when I was 14. Kigo looked like he had seen Kami, and Ichigo was just staring dumbly. Chad was watching blandly, no longer really surprised by anything Naruto could say. The girls were staring, flabbergasted. Orihim, still totally oblivious to her surroundings and the total implications of the conversation, asked the obvious question. What was she like? Naruto adopted a thinking face for a moment. Um, she was about as tall as Tatsuki and had bubblegum pink hair. Naruto said absently. Ichigo gasped and choked on his drink. Chad slammed a massive hand into his back, clearing his blocked throat and knocking him into his food. Ichigo wheezed out thank you. Before coughing lightly and turning to Naruto who was chuckling. It was her natural hair color too, I'm not joking. The girls all ran hands through their hair and stared obviously thinking what would I look like with pink hair. She was sweet and kind and very forgiving, but she also had one hell of a temper. Never went home without bruises when I saw her. Beautiful woman. Why aren't you with her now? Everyone shivered as chill settled over the area and Naruto seemed to withdraw into himself. Orihim reached out and touched his arm. She was murdered by a man I considered my brother. Everyone was now looking at Naruto with shocked or sympathetic expressions on their faces. Dad was the only one who noticed Naruto's eyes. Well, his face was impassive, his eyes held a light of contentment. You avenged her, didn't you? Chad said, more of a statement than a question. Heads turned towards the massive Mexican and then back to Naruto. Naruto nodded and several people gaped. Naruto just shrugged dismissively. I was acquitted. No jury in their right mind would convict me for killing someone who just killed someone I loved. Ichigo frowned while staring hard at Naruto quickly coming to a decision. There, it's not like you're a serial killer. I would have done the same thing, most likely. Ichigo said in response. Chad nodded in agreement and Naruto sighed in relief. He looked around and a small tear traveled down his cheek as he saw the acceptance in everyone's eyes. Hell, it's not the whole truth. It's not even a fraction. I may be 2000 years old, but it's the best feeling in the world to have friends and be accepted. He was roused from his musings when a tongue swiped along his cheek collecting the tear and sending shivers down his spine. He turned to see Tatsuki sitting back and blushing crimson, a horrified expression on her face. Ichigo was shocked into sillydom, he'd never really seen Tatsuki do anything remotely feminine and absolutely nothing sexual. But she'd just licked a tear off Naruto's face. Holy shit Kigo was stunned. Now he knew Naruto was a god among men. Note to self, ask him how to woo women. Orihim was surprised, but not stunned. She knew Naruto was very attractive, but she liked Ichigo, so it didn't matter. She knew that Tatsuki was attracted to the new guy, so she wasn't stunned like everyone else. When it happened, she was just surprised that Tatsuki actually did it. 
Dad was just sitting there. However he was making light choking sounds that got Ichigo's attention. He tried slapping the huge man on the back. But it didn't work, so he stood and kicked him in the back between the shoulder blades. Chad gasped and sucked in some air. Thanks Ichigo. He said gruffly. Itsuki was sitting there, mortified beyond belief at what she had done. I can't believe I did that. What the hell is wrong with me? You don't just go around licking people's faces, it's just not right. While still mentally berating herself, Naruto got a sly look on his face. Ichigo was watching Naruto go from shock to mischievous fairly quickly. And his gut, which he had always trusted, told him one thing. That's a bad look. Ichigo just hoped it wasn't bad for him. Naruto grinned seductively as he leaned forwards and whispered into Tatsuki's ear. But everyone had good enough hearing to decipher the blonde's words. I didn't know you were that kind of girl Tatsuki-chan. I bet you're a wild one, eh? Got any whips and chains at home? He asked casually. Ichigo's jaw hit the floor and his eyes popped out of his head, along with everyone else's. Well, if you're not going to answer, I'll just have to find some other way. Naruto added. Tatsuki was still trying to respond, but all that came out were faint noises that sounded like a sea lion barking. So, does she Ichigo? Naruto asked suddenly. Ichigo spluttered in shock, and to his further shame, Chad roared with laughter. Ichigo growled and got to his feet. You're dead Naruto. Surprisingly, both Ichigo and Tatsuki yelled this. The duo charged at the blonde, who jumped to his feet and backpedaled away from them. Only Chad noticed where he was headed. Naruto, stop. He called. The blonde didn't, his back hit the railing, but he didn't stop. He kept going, over and out of sight. Itsuki screamed and rushed to the edge, and so did Ichigo, who had gone pale. Everyone was soon at the railing on the edge of the rooftop and looking down, very surprised and relieved to see Naruto has lodged himself with his hands and feet in between two windows on the fifth and sixth floor, dunno how tall the building is so go with it. He was currently looking for a way out. Ichigo looked around at everyone's relieved expressions. So, how are we gonna get him out of this mess? Any ideas people? He called. Orahim had a plan. We could all take off out shirts and tie them together in a rope. Then we could lower it down so he can climb up like in Rapunzel. She suggested. Everyone stared at her oddly. While slightly stupid, as the girls would not take their shirts off, it was a surprisingly smart plan for Orahim. Or we could take them off and tie them up into a blanket. Then we could get under him like the firemen do. Or we could make a human ladder, or maybe we could catch a really big bird and fly down to get him up, or everyone started to ignore her ramblings, as she went on into scenarios that were increasing in magnificence and decreasing in plausibility. Everyone heard Naruto grunt and looked back down at him. Don't worry guys, I got it covered. He told the group. Ichigo was the first to figure out his plan, Naruto was looking over his shoulder at a nearby tree, which was about 10 feet away from the building. Do you think you can make it Naruto? He asked. Naruto looked up and grinned foxily while nodding. Itsuki flushed slightly, as they could visibly see Naruto's muscles ripple as he tensed just before he launched himself backwards. In an amazing feat of acrobatics, he turned in midair and disappeared into the tree's foliage. Did he make it? Orahim asked in a small whisper. She was answered when a blonde-haired head popped out of the top of the tree and swiveled to face them with a happy grin. That crazy son of a bitch. Ichigo laughed and then frowned. How you gonna get down? Easy, I'm not. Oh shit. Away from the railing people. Everyone backed up, unsure was going to happen. There was a loud grunt of exertion before Naruto was once again flying in midair, but back towards the building. He latched his hands onto the railing and hauled himself over, grinning and bowing like a showman. Tatsuki stormed up and launched a fist into his gut. Don't do crazy stuff like that again. And if you ever say anything about me like that again, prepare for the most vicious beatdown of your life. Got that? She asked viciously. Tad's eyes widened as Naruto merely grunted and shook off the blow. The only other person who could do that was Chad himself. For Ichigo and Tatsuki, it merely confirmed their suspicions on him being a pro fighter. The bell rang and everyone gathered their stuff and headed off to the last classes of the day. Ichigo was walking calmly along an alley when he saw some punks on skateboards knock over a glass bottle with some flowers in it. He growled in indignance as he ran up to them and kicked the one who was trailing in the back. The punk's head slammed into the ground, knocking him out. The others stopped. You got a death wish, pal. The biggest and ugliest of them said as he stepped forward. Nobody jumps one of my boys for no reason and lives to tell the tale. He stepped forward, his camo pants and white shirt ruffling slightly in a sudden breeze. Hmm. Was Ichigo's reply. That's all you gotta say. The punk charged and was met with a foot to the face. He fell down and Ichigo's foot slammed into his back repeatedly. Little Yama's down. We gotta help him. Said one of them. The others replied. Are you crazy? No way am I taking on that psycho. 
Ichigo meanwhile, was stamping his foot into little Yama's head so hard his face was being buried into the pavement. He finished and looked up, giving Yama's accomplices a death glare. Listen up you pawn scum. You see that? He asked venomously, pointing at the knocked over bottle. First question, what do you think that is? You, the one in the middle. Answer. He barked. The one he was addressing looked around and was frightened to find he was the one in the middle. Wait, you talking to me? I guess somebody left those flowers for some kid who got killed here. Ichigo nodded and then kicked him in the face sending him flying and causing the other two to cry out. Correct. Ichigo yelled. Wait. Chill out. Said one of them nervously. Now, the next question, why is that face lying down? I guess one of us knocked it over when we were skateboarding through here. Said the shorter one who was shaking in fear. Ichigo delivered a roundhouse kick to both of them. You idiots catch on fast. Now go and apologize, or next time the flowers will be here for you. A shadow covering his face and flames appeared behind him, making him look like some sort of hellish deity. The two he had kicked screamed and bolted with the third following, all screaming we're sorry. There. That should keep those assholes from showing their ugly faces around here. A girl appeared behind him standing next to the pole. Sorry about that, I'll bring you some. Hey Ichigo. Ichigo turned in the direction of the loud voice and saw Naruto jogging towards him. I saw you beat up those guys. You're pretty good. So, who's the girl? She's pretty. The girl behind him blushed. Wait you can see her? Ichigo stuttered. Ah uh, yeah, why am I supposed to be blind? Naruto asked, beeping his head to the side. She's a ghost. Ichigo said simply. What? Naruto yelped. The ghost giggled drawing their attention. Thank you for your defense. I think now I might be able to rest peacefully. Ichigo nodded slowly. No problem. I'll bring you some new flowers tomorrow. See ya. He turned and grabbed Naruto, who was gaping at the girl, and dragged him off. Naruto was shocked beyond belief. He had heard from Yoruchi and Urahara about the pluses and hollows and Shinigami. But he had yet to see anything other than that hollow, so it was a bit of a shock to see a ghost for the first time. Ichigo let Naruto go after a bit and looked at him as Naruto followed him to wherever they were going. Why are you here? The orange-haired teen demanded. I, I got lost. Naruto said quickly. Ichigo sighed, looking up at the sky. So, you can see ghosts? He asked rhetorically. Yeah, I guess. Naruto answered. For how long? That was my first time, you? My whole life, my little sister Karen can't see them. And my other little sister Yuzu can sense them, but my dad can't see anything. We run a small clinic nearby. Come on, we have stuff to talk about. I guess you might as well meet my family. Naruto nodded and followed. Ichigo let Naruto look over his home for a few seconds before beckoning him inside. He opened the door and walked in. Naruto followed slowly. You're late. Ichigo ducked, but Naruto wasn't so lucky. He was sent slamming into the floor. Kurosaki Isen froze, he just kicked a stranger. Dad you idiot. Ichigo was about to attack his father when his father doubled over with a fist planted in his gut, courtesy of Naruto. Then he received an elbow to the back of the head. With a groan, he crumpled over. Ichigo stared at Naruto who was smiling mischievously. Your family's fun. I like them already. So this is your dad huh? From the look of him, I would have thought he's the uncle no one ever talks about. Ichigo chuckled. Naruto turned as a giggle, and a dry laugh came from behind him. Yo, I'm Yuzumaki Naruto. I'm a new kid at Ichigo's school, and since I can apparently see ghosts, Carrot Top thought he'd introduce me to his family. The short light brown haired girl giggled again as Naruto walked over and settled himself down in a chair. She handed him a bowl of rice. I'm Karen. Karen introduced herself. Naruto grinned back at her. Yuzu turned back and gasped. Oh I'm sorry, I thought I gave you a full bowl. She apologized. You did. Naruto replied. Ichigo chuckled while Yuzu gaped at his speed eating. Don't worry Yuzu, he'll be fine. He ate some of Orihem's cooking, lived, and liked it. Yuzu and Karen, who both knew of Orihem's cooking from the one time she had been asked to babysit them, looked at Naruto in awe. What? Do I have something on my face? They shook their heads. Meanwhile, Isin picked himself off the floor and sat down at the table. So, who's your friend Ichigo? He asked. New kid at school. He can see ghosts too. Isin began to cry. It's so unfair. Why can't I see them? His three kids sighed and didn't answer the rather common question. Unlike on previous nights, he got an answer. It's because you're not cool like us. The three Kurosaki kids doubled over in laughter at Naruto's statement while their father sobbed piteously. He suddenly stopped and punched Ichigo in the face, knocking him to the ground. That's for being late. Ichigo jumped up and tackled his father, a small brawl ensued with lots of shouting amazingly not damaging anything. Naruto swear drop does this happen a lot. Yeah. Karen said while getting another bowl of rice. 
Dad thinks it toughens Ichigo up by attacking him randomly and without warming. He hasn't realized yet that he usually ends up the worst hurt of the two. Naruto then noticed someone else in the room. Hey Ichigo, you've got a visitor. Ichigo stopped his yelling at his father and spotted the glasses wearing ghost. Ichigo took a couple of swipes at the ghost, trying to make him go away when Naruto spoke again. I think it's cool to see ghosts, don't you Karen? He asked nonchalantly. No, I don't believe in ghosts. I'm in denial. Naruto sweat dropped and coughed lightly. Suddenly there was a yell of drop your guard. And Ichigo was pinned to the floor until he threw his father off of him. They stood, lined up and swung, hitting each other in the face. Isen collapsed again. The lesson was free. Came the mumbled answer to the reason behind the fight. Ichigo grunted. Never mind dinner, I'm going to my room. I'm sure you can find your way home Naruto. See you tomorrow Ichigo disappeared with a wave. Naruto sighed and stood. Thanks for the rice Yuzu, it was really great. It's been good to meet you Karen and Kurosaki-san. Karen just nodded while Yuzu waved happily. Isen mumbled from the floor by Naruto. And then the blonde was gone. Wow, you sure have way with kids, dad. Said Karen sardonically. Me? What did I do? Came the childish reply. Dad, you can't go beating up Ichigo anymore. He's going through a rough time right now. He says he's seeing more spirits than ever before. Said Yuzu. What? Why would he talk about thing like this with you too, and probably that Naruto kid and not me, his dad? It doesn't make sense. Said the now frantic Isen. Sure it does. Said Karen for one thing, you're over 40. And another, emotionally, you're still at a preschool level dad. Admitted. Isen staggered over to a huge poster of his wife, crying. Oh my dear, why? Maybe it's because they're hitting puberty. But our daughters are being so cold to me. What do I do? What do I do? He wailed. Karen sweat dropped and groaned for starters, take down that poster. The next day, Naruto was walking to school. Passing the weird devastation, which Yuruchi had said was a hollow attack, he saw a shaken Ichigo walking along with a ghost from yesterday. Hey man what's up? Ichigo gave him a funny look then decided to explain. Since you can see spirits, I guess I had better explain. I saw this weird monster that was trying to attack the spirit here, when this short girl in a weird outfit came along and cut it in half with a sword. I guess they were spirits of some sort, since no one else could see them, only the damage they caused Naruto frowned and acted shocked. Um, must have been a hollow and a shinigami. They headed off to school, no more words spoken. That night, while Lichigo kicked Kachiki Rukia in the ass and subsequently got tied up and explained all the ins and out of the spirit world through very bad diagrams that looked like bunnies, Naruto was having a busy night as well that was a lot more dangerous. Naruto stared around amazed at the massive underground training ground. He was finally going to become a Shinigami, an apparently dangerous process. This cavern I built myself. Also, time passes differently here, for this moment anyway. I set up a one-use device that changes time. Roughly 72 hours in here will be about 8 out there, so no need to worry about missing school. Naruto sighed in relief, I know nothing like this exists in Bleach, but I finished this chapter and then remembered Naruto was in that hole for 3 days. And for the sake of the plotline, I needed him to turn up at school the next day. He looked over at Yoruchi who gave him an encouraging grin while Yurahara brandished his cane. Naruto sweat dropped until the end of the cane poke him in the forehead. Naruto felt weird, like his body wasn't working properly. Even QB was saying something was off. Then he spotted the chain connecting him to his body. Uh, this was supposed to happen right? Yoruchi nodded and Naruto grinned slowly. Okay, now what? Now you fight Yoruru Naruto gave Yurahara a weird look. You serious? He received a nod fine, but why? Yuruchi answered this time. To give you a chance to learn how to move in your spirit body. Naruto nodded and looked over at Yururu who was putting on a helmet and padded gloves. Yurahara held up another set, but Naruto waved him away. Yururu charged. Even though Naruto was not expecting her to move so fast, two millennia of fighting experience allowed him to adapt. He dodged, and his eyes widened as a great explosion of dirt and rock came from where her fist impacted with the floor. She advanced again. Yuruchi had only seen him fight once, and it had ended quickly. She now watched, amazed, as he quickly dodged and occasionally blocked and deflected Yururu's attacks. Yurahara was even more amazed as Naruto had learned how to move so quickly. His eyes widened when Naruto threw a punch. Finally, after almost five minutes of fighting, Naruto has decided to reciprocate. The punch connected with Yururu's helmet, sending her rocketing back. Yururu got back up. Naruto's eyes narrowed as her eyes changed. She disappeared and reappeared in front of him, about to deliver a devastating kick to his face. Jinta winced as it thudded home, but gaped when Naruto was only moved back a few inches. Yurahara grabbed Yururu before she could attack again, and she seemed to calm down returning to her normal timid self. Lesson 1 cleared. 
Good job Naruto. Naruto grinned at Urahara, who smiled back. Even though you probably were before, we can be sure now that you're using your Riatsu. Naruto nodded. Suddenly, Tessai appeared with a massive axe and slammed it down on the chain connecting him to his body, severing it. Naruto stared at it before he collapsed, gasping. What the hell is wrong with me? Urahara answered. Once your chain of fate has been severed, you can no longer return to your physical body. You're dying. Naruto's eyes shot wide. What the fucking hell is wrong with you? I don't want to die you asso his mouth was covered by Yuruchi's delicate hand, muffling his shouts. Listen. He glared for a few seconds before sighing and looking at Urahara, who was grinning. Soon your chain will start to erode from the point it was severed. When it reaches your chest, you will become a hollow, and we'll be forced to kill you. Naruto growled, definitely not wanting to become some freaky monster. So what do I do? He asked. You must finish lesson 2, my fellow blonde. Once you do that, you will be able to access your dormant Shinigami powers, which we know are there, thanks to those tests we conducted during those first few days. Naruto nodded at Uruchi's explanation. Okay let's get started. Urahara grinned. Begin. Naruto blinked. Nothing had happened. But he did suddenly feel weightless. Oh crap. He fell down the hole, Tessai jumping in after him. Naruto lay on the bottom for a few seconds before he swiftly got up. He immediately heard Tessai speak. Bakudo 99. Restrict. Naruto groaned in pain as his arms were clamped behind him with what felt like metal restraints. Urahara called down. Naruto, you got it to climb out to regain your Shinigami powers. Naruto groaned, not bothering to point out how stupid it was to tie up his arms. Not too long ago, he figured out chakra techniques do not work with Riatsu. You have 72 hours to get out. After that you're dead. Naruto nodded and sat, trying to think a way out. 24 hours later 48 hours remaining. Naruto groaned. He hurt all over. He'd fallen asleep for about 8 hours, which had astonished Urahara and Yuruchi. He'd fallen asleep after spending an hour trying to figure a way out. He had then spent the next 15 hours trying to run up the walls, which was subsequently why he hurt so much. 5 hours later 43 hours remaining. Naruto cried out as he slammed into the floor. He tried once again to get out, this time by flipping from wall to wall. But his tied up arms had thrown his balance off and had resulted in him crashing and burning. 20 hours later. 23 hours remaining. Naruto had another rest period of 8 hours, using the remaining 12 to try and break the bands on his arms, that didn't work out either. 8 hours later. 15 hours remaining. Well, I fell asleep again. God damn it, how the hell do I get out of this place wait a second why the fuck didn't I think of that before. His shout woke up Yuruchi, who had curled up like a cat near the rim of the hole. Urahara approached the hole, asking the obvious question. I wonder what he's gonna do now. Hey Urahara can you hear me? Naruto called. Yeah how's I going? Not all that good, but I was thinking, since I can't get out of the hole, why not just make the hole a whole lot bigger? He asked. What the hell is he planning to do? Iruchi watched in curiosity as Naruto stood in the exact center of the shaft and seemed to concentrate. And then she felt it. Evil. An aura of pure malice and rage had begun to fill the air. Urahara felt it too and stared down at its apparent source, Naruto. Yuruchi gasped as a red energy seemed to pour out of Naruto and form a fox-like shape around him. With its arms bound, he roared and the entire structure shook. A large tail of energy slammed into the wall of the shaft. Not damaging it, but once again sending out a shockwave. Naruto roared again, this time deeper the evil and rage in the air was making both ex Shinigami sweat. This must be QB Urahara came to a conclusion in a whisper. Yeah, this is just so, so evil how can he stand it? I dunno. Naruto roared again as two more tails formed, and a massive amount of killing intent invaded the air. Unprepared, Urahara fell to his knees. Damn it, this is as bad as Kenpachi. Yuruchi, who had also gotten back to her feet, nodded. The level of Kai continued to rise as a fourth tail formed, and the energy surrounding him solidified into a body. Another tail formed. And another after that. The very earth was shaking from the amount of power being released. Urahara knew that the special stone he lined his cavern with would stop any signs of this from reaching the outside world. But he had no doubt that the aura of evil would be felt for miles by those sensitive enough. Then it all just died. Urahara shook himself to regain composure and kicked awake both Jinta and Yururu, who had fainted previously and looked down in the hole. Naruto was laying face down and breathing hard. God damn it. With no way to release the energy build up, I couldn't hold it as long. Damn. He whispered as he passed out. 14 hours later, 10 minutes remain. Naruto groaned as he woke up in a small blackened crater. He looked over to see a very tired look Tessai, whose shirt was drenched in sweat. He then noticed his chain was eating away at itself furiously he only had seconds left. Oh, fuck. 
A few hours earlier, Ichigo had just finished off the hollow that had tried to hurt his family when an evil aura flooded the area. He fell to his knees, and behind him, Rukia collapsed. Hey Rukia, what the hell is this? A hollow. No. I have no idea what it is. It cut out. Ichigo sighed in relief and then passed out. Rukia got to work covering it up. Iruchi bolted upright as Naruto began to scream in pain. She ran over to the shaft where Urahara was staring impassively down. She moaned. No, he failed. Maybe, but I don't think so. The screaming continued his mask is forming, but he's fighting it. He could still become a Shinigami. Yuruchi nodded and looked down at the screaming warrior. Come on Naruto, you can do this. Inside Naruto's mind. He awoke to see a calm mountaintop. He looked out over the edge which showed a deep lush valley. He turned when he heard a voice calmly say hello Naruto. Hello Naruto. Said another voice. Naruto turned slowly and sucked in a breath. Two beings were behind him. The former was a large man in fire red armor. He had a katana sheathed at his side and a large helmet with spikes protruding from the top to form a crown. He looked every part like a terrible and ancient king. The latter was curled around the throne the first was sitting on. It was long, large, and had bluish-white scales with massive leathery wings. Its tail had spines running along it until it ended in a large curved blade. Its long neck was topped with a leathery frill, and on its head were two large horns that curved forward like that of a bull. Its feet had wicked-looking talons that could probably cut through stone. If you don't know what this thing is, you're retarded. We are, the man on the throne said in a deep and authoritative voice. There's Aunt Pakuto. Said the dragon in a deep rumbling voice that made the flat mountaintop shake. Our name is. What was that? I didn't hear you. The two, the king and the dragon as Naruto thought of them, spoke again in unison. It is a pity that you cannot reach us yet. But no matter, now is not the time for such things. The dragon lifted its head and opened its mouth, blasting out a jet of air, sending Naruto flying. He screamed out as he fell of the mountaintop, nothing but kilometers of air below him until solid ground. He heard something above him and turned in midair to see the king standing on the dragon's head as it flew in circles nearby. You have Shinigami powers. You must find them. This world is dying as you die. You must find your true power before you die, or we are all lost forever. The two said in unison once again. As he spoke, hundred upon hundreds of boxes began to fall out of the sky as the mountain slowly disintegrated. Oh great, how am I supposed to do this? QB is no help, I haven't been able to contact him since this started. Shit. Naruto stared out at the boxes. Well, it's my power, so I guess it's connected to me what the hell do I do? Okay, I gotta concentrate Naruto closed his eyes and concentrated, searching for his inner power. He felt a spark of something and opened his eyes. A red ribbon connected him to a specific box. He tugged the ribbon, bringing the box towards him. It opened, showing a hilt of a sword. Hurry up and take us. The king's and the dragon's voices commanded in perfect sync. Naruto grabbed the hilt. He heard the two voices speak to him again. Good. We will meet again. Do not worry if you do not know our name. We are patient on our mountain. Back in the real world. The screaming continued, and the white liquid continued to pour out, covering Naruto's face as he screamed. Tessai gasped as the bands holding his arms began to crack and break. It's at its limit boss. I am switching to suppression mode. He slammed his fists into the ground, causing a small shockwave. Bakudo 99. Part 2 Banky. I don't know what it is exactly this is what it sounds like on the English ep, first incantation, bandage. Second incantation, 100 deadbolts. Naruto kept screaming while the others up top looked on in anticipation and worry. It's too late. Shouted Tessai. Final incantation, fatal seal. He didn't hear the shout of Nuo. From Yuruchi. But he was too slow, and Naruto exploded with power. The bright red flame shot out of the shaft, blasting Yuruchi, Urahara, and the two kids backwards. A large ball of flame launched out of the shaft and slammed to earth a short distance away. Everyone stood and stared waiting for the smoke to clear. A figure emerged from the smoke. Iruchi sucked in a breath. The first thing she saw was the black hakama and then a red undershirt. Then she saw the mask and gaped. Naruto had a hollow mask on his face, but it wasn't like any she had seen before. It had the same standard shape, but two long spikes ran across Naruto's head. On each side, the mask had one spike below and above his ear. It also covered the top of his head, going back about two inches. The mask was two colors, red and white. It was mostly red. The red went down on either side of his face, separated by a long white line about an inch wide. The eye sockets were slightly slanted and glowing red. Three white slashed broke up the red on either side of his face in the same position as his whisker marks. It also had four white spikes protruding from the top, giving the impression of a crown. All in all, it looked like a king's crown. Want a picture? Go to the link in my profile. 
Remember that this is a rough picture, since it's where I got the idea from. But it almost perfectly fits the king theme, except for armor color, and drop all the ice and skulls. And change the sword and the throne from ice to a normal looking throne. I stared as Naruto reached up and pulled it off, flinging it aside where it smashed on a rock. He grinned at them, and Yuruchi laughed in relief. She may be one tough cookie, but she still worries about her friends. He ambled towards them and then they saw his Zanpakuto. Or should it be Zanpakuto's? Naruto felt their weight on his shoulders and drew them slowly. Their scabbards were positioned in an X on his back. He drew them showing off two katanas that were about half a foot longer than a normal katana and a couple of inches thicker. Naruto grinned as he examined the blades. He swung them experimentally, getting used to the weight. He then went through some simple katas of one of the styles he knew. Iruchi walked over and stared at the blonde's blades. Two of them? That's rare. Naruto smirked, glad to know he was, while not unique, was part of a small group. Ha! I made it. He shouted before he passed out. Yuruchi chuckled, and then it turned into full-blown laughter. I'll take him home. I know there's a third step, but I doubt he needs it, eh? Yeah. He already knows how to use his Zanpakuto, or at least how to fight and use a sword, so he should be good for now. I'll use step 3 to unlock his Shikai. Yuruchi nodded as she slung Naruto over her shoulder and climbed the ladder back up to the shop. The next day outside of the school, Naruto was dragged into an alley by Ichigo. Hey. Oh what's up Ichigo. You looked freaked man. Ichigo went on to explain what happened in the night and how he met the Shinigami Rukia and how he became a substitute Shinigami and how he killed the Hollow. Naruto whistled. And why are you telling me all this? He asked. Ichigo froze, he was stumped. I dunno. I guess because I mentioned it before I knew all this. Remember how I said I saw her and that Hollow earlier yesterday? Naruto nodded and grinned minutely, patting his friend on the back. Well thanks for sharing, Mr. Hero. Wonder why your family doesn't remember. That is kind of strange. Oh well it just slipped Naruto's mind to tell Ichigo he was a fellow Shinigami. Later on the way to class, Ichigo bumped into Orahim, knocking her down, and rather blandly said oh it's you. I'm sorry. Before Tatsuki could yell at him, Naruto slammed his fist on the back of the orange head, sending him careening into the wall. That is not how you treat a woman, team. God, you're worse than Iro sensei Tatsuki sent him a weird look, but said nothing. Hey, you okay Haim? He asked, offering her a hand. Orahim blushed slightly as she picked up her things and took the offered hand. Ichigo walked over, rubbing his throbbing head. I'm sorry Orahim, I'll be more careful next time. He apologized sincerely. She blushed again, this time more fiercely. I it's okay. I I, uh, I have volleyball I in a couple of minutes. Yeah, that's right volleyball. She repeated as she jogged off down the hall. What's the matter with her? Ichigo asked, nonplussed. I wonder Tatsuki trailed off as she went into thought. Naruto grinned slyly. It was probably your ugly ass face, Ichigo Tatsuki laughed as Naruto ducked a punch from Ichigo. In class, Ichigo was lounging lazily in a chair while Naruto and the gang of guys chatted about the truck that crashed into his house last night. When someone else entered the room Naruto became alarmed, something was different about her. Hello. You're Ichigo aren't you? Ichigo turned and suddenly looked like he had seen the devil himself. I'll be sitting next to you from now on. Name's Rukia, by the way. Ichigo jumped out of his chair. I it's you. He pointed a quivering finger at the new girl. Kigo asked the obvious question. Ichigo, what the hell's wrong with you? Chad frowned at his orange-haired friend. You know each other? Naruto grinned evilly. Stop. Mayhem time. Rukia Naruto said the girl's name in such a way that it seemed he was remembering the name. Everyone looked at him in the thinking pose as the proverbial light bulb lit up above his blonde head. Hey Ichigo, wasn't that the name of that chick you knocked up the other night? Naruto asked loudly. Ichigo's eyes widened and he went white as a sheet. Kigo spluttered and his eyes almost popped out of his head. Mizuro looked slyly at Naruto, obviously seeing he was up to no good. Chad suspiciously started coughing. Rukia had the funniest reaction. She pointed at Naruto and went purple. Wa wa what the hell are you talking about? She screeched. Naruto let fly a full belly laugh, but dived out of his chair when Ichigo lunged at him yelling I'll kill Yaoi. When they finally got Ichigo to calm down, he settled for glaring at Naruto who was still smiling smugly until Rukia kicked him in the shin. Naruto, grumbling about uptight idiots being unable to take a joke, rubbed his shin as Ichigo denied having ever met Rukia. Class started. Later, in a deserted courtyard. Ichigo glared at Rukia. What the hell are you playing at, you freaky little nut job? Rukia smiled serenely back at him. How scary, you big brute. Jeepers, you're not gonna hurt me are you? She whimpered falsely, cutely sucking on her index finger. Ichigo stared. First of all, you can knock it off with that goody two-shoes act. 
Well, I think it's pretty good, considering I learned it overnight. A new voice spoke up. I'll give you a 7 for performance, and a 10 for quick learning. Ichigo whirled round and spotted Naruto. He instantly relaxed, but noticed Rukia was still tense. Relax, he knows everything. Ichigo stated. Rukia whipped around and glared at him. What? Why the hell did you tell him? She hollered. Because he can see spirits like I can before I became a Shinigami temporarily. Ichigo replied calmly. Rukia frowned, but went on to explain how she couldn't return home because she lost all her powers while Ichigo was still a Shinigami. You have to perform my duties now Ichigo. She told him resignedly. Naruto chuckled at his blank expression, continuing to watch the proceedings. He frowned when Ichigo refused to help. As Ichigo turned to walk away, he noticed Naruto smirking at him. Then he heard Rukia say simply I see you leave me no choice. He turned to meet a palm to the face. After he felt the pain, he felt strangely disembodied. Ichigo looked around and spotted his body and Naruto roaring with laughter. Ah, crap. What happened to my body? He demanded. I ejected your soul from your body. Rukia explained. Buo. Me next. Rukia looked incredulously at Naruto who smiled back cheekily and jumping up and down like a rabbit. You idiot, this doesn't make you a Shinigami. She scolded him sternly. I'll believe it when I see it. Come on, give it a shot. Naruto insisted. Rukia glared and let out her breath in a huff. Fine. She hit him. Ichigo stared dumbfounded. Rukia stared dumbfounded and both looked at the glove. Rukia stuttered th this shouldn't be able to do this. Naruto howled with laughter as they looked up. He was bent over, tears streaming down his face. You should see your faces. You look so stupid. Naruto wheezed. Rukia glared. How? Simple. I became a Shinigami around the same time he did with the help of an ex-Shinigami, be a very dangerous method. Rukia frowned. Only one ex-Shinigami was nuts enough to do something like this. She'd talk to him later. Naruto stared down at his body for a few seconds before clicking his fingers and shouting Eureka. Rukia's eyes widened as Naruto shoved a hand into his spirit body's stomach, pulled out a large red orb, and shoved it into his body. He stood back for a few seconds before his body convulsed and sat upright. Ichigo cried out and fell down. Naruto watched as his now occupied body looked around at its surroundings, then stared at its hands. His eyes widened when the hands touched its chest. His jaw dropped when the body opened his zipper and had a look inside Rukia turned away, blushing crimson. The body zipped up his pants slowly and sat ramrod straight. I'm a guy it uttered. A-H-H-H. No. I'm a guy. Naruto's body howled. What the hell QB. You are a guy. Rukia and Ichigo stared at Naruto, who gave them a look saying I'll explain later. QB and Naruto's body turned and gasped, seeing Naruto in his Shinigami form. Well, ah uh, you see, I'm not really a dude. It said quietly. What? I thought everyone would take me more seriously if they thought I was a guy. And you didn't tell me this why. Because I was embarrassed. Happy now? No. Listen, I'm going off with these two for a bit. Look after my body and don't get into trouble. And whatever you do, don't go back into school yet. Oh and look after Ichigo's body too. Naruto added as an afterthought. Rukia, Naruto, and Ichigo were walking away when they heard a rather lighter version of Naruto's voice say. Oh, this Ichigo kid has such nice muscles. I wonder what he looks like with his shirt off. They froze like roses in a blast of liquid nitrogen. Rukia blushed because she thought the same thing only a few minutes ago. Ichigo reddened because a female of some sort was complimenting him. And Naruto Naruto was blushing in mortification at QB, saying that in his body. They turned to see QB squeezing one of Ichigo's biceps which looked disturbing in Naruto's body. QB. QB's head snapped up and she blushed crimson. Sorry. She apologized meekly. She smirked slyly as she formed a seal. In a puff of smoke, she looked like Naruto in his auric no jutsu form. She then hefted Ichigo's body and walked away. Naruto grinned sheepishly at Rukia and Ichigo's astounded looks. I guess I have some explaining to do eh? The two nodded. Well how to put this him he thought about it and then just decided to explain how he did Yoruchi and Yurahara. Rukia stared wide-eyed as Naruto finished his story. So you're a 2000 year old traveler from another world who has a demon inside them who is now controlling your body and is actually female, and you recently became a Shinigami? She rambled out. Naruto nodded meekly. Yeah, that sums it up pretty well. Both Ichigo and Rukia were thinking the same exact thing. Holy shit. I believe this. Naruto grinned at their expressions. So uh, what do we do now? Rukia's head snapped up and she shook herself out of her daze, pulled out her phone and checked the message on it. Follow me, there's a hollow nearby. As Naruto and Ichigo followed Rukia, Ichigo decided to ask some detailed questions. So about you killing that guy who killed your girlfriend, obviously it was true, but what really happened? 
He stared pointedly at Naruto as he asked the question. Naruto sighed and thought back, all of the guys would worship him if they were to hear this. We were 20 and celebrating a mass birthday. Sakura-chan's and my twin sons, my two twin daughters from Anko-chan, my son with Hinata-chan, and as well as the confirmation of Ino-chan's first child being on the way. Everything had gone deathly quiet within a 30-meter radius of them. Wait a second. How many girls was that? Ichigo asked, looking rather disbelieving. Four. Naruto answered simply. He could hear the gongs ringing in his two companions' heads. You had four girlfriends Rukia whipped round, staring at him in horror. Correction, wives. And no, there weren't four, there were seven. There was also Tenten, Tamari and Hanabi. But Tamari-chan and Ten-chan wouldn't sleep with me until we were married and Hanabi-chan didn't want a child at the time. Naruto explained like it was nothing. Was this common in your world? Naruto was surprised at Rukia asking such a question. No. But I did love them all and still do. Kami-sama, I miss them. It was, however, welcomed with open arms. As it was learned that my massive chakra capacity, which is naturally higher than pretty much everyone else's, was passed on to my kids. That naturally made us into a clan. But I'm getting off topic. Back to your question. We were having a party when Sasuke, the man I told you about, turned up. He had these special eyes that were very rare, since his clan had been wiped out. But they weren't as strong as they could be, since he needed to kill his best friend to gain the final level. Naruto paused to let this sink in. He attacked my family. We got the children to safety, and he and I fought. I beat him up pretty badly, and he was furious. So the asswhip decided to go for the next best thing. Someone who had at least liked him for a little bit. That person was Sakura. He killed her before I could stop him without a second thought. Luckily for me, not so luckily for him, it didn't work. Sasuke didn't have friends. He was incapable of love or compassion, so even if he had killed me, he wouldn't have achieved his goal. Ichigo glared at nothing while Rukia stared straight ahead, trying not to cry at the grief in his voice and the tragedy of the tale. So then you killed him. No. Ichigo looked over in confusion. I was almost insane with rage, and I would have torn him apart until QB told me to take my revenge slowly. So this is what I did, I knocked him out and tied him up. You see, the reason Sasuke was such an ass was because his brother had slaughtered the rest of the clan by himself. I think it had something to do with them trying to kill him or something like that. Anyway, his sole purpose in life was to kill his brother, then revive his clan. So I decided to take all of it away from him one by. One Ichigo stared in morbid curiosity as Naruto continued, with venom seeping into his voice. I hunted down his brother Itachi. I fought him and slew him, then took the evidence his head back home. I walked into Sasuke's cell. Flashback. Sasuke was tied up in a chair with a chakra suppression device on his chest. A table separated him from the only other chair in the room, which Naruto sat in. Hey fucker, I've got a present for you. Naruto spat. What, a worthless whore like your wives so I can revive the greatest clan to ever exist? Sasuke snapped back arrogantly. Naruto gave Sasuke the sickest, smuggest, most sadistic, and most pleased grin he could muster. Nope. Naruto then plopped Itachi's eyeless head down on the table and switched to the devil's leer. Happy days, motherfucker. Naruto chirped in the sweetest, most cheerful voice he could. Sasuke stared and stared, then he glared at Naruto, his red eyes positively glowing with rage. You took away my purpose, you son of a bitch. He screamed cursed for a bit longer until he calmed down. He smirked evilly at the blonde. No matter. I'll just tell the council I'm going to revive my clan and use your wives to do it. Then I'll kill your bastard children. He muttered loud enough for Naruto to hear, not a drop of sanity in his tone. Naruto put his devil's leer back on and put something down on the table. It was a small container which was empty but had a medical label on it. What's that dope? Sasuke asked, actually sounding curious. Oh, not much, just a little something I slipped into your food. Naruto explained in a cheerful chirp. Sasuke whipped his head back up to gaze at Naruto. What the hell did you do? Um, took away another dream. You see, this substance does something very specific, it destroys the male ability to reproduce. Now, all your equipment will do in the future is piss. You'll never get it up or repopulate Kanoha with your wretched species. It does this process in an excruciatingly painful way. The music should start any second now. Naruto checked his watch as he sat back and stared impassively at Sasuke's horrified expression. He grinned devilishly as Sasuke began to convulse and scream about his fishing tackle it lasted for about half an hour before he stopped screaming. Sasuke slumped in the chair, sobbing. Damn you he whispered in a voice that was red raw from screaming. Millimeters ha 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 ha
Though I'm not done yet Sasuke-chan. Nowhere near done. Now I'm going to take the last thing of worth you have. And no, it's not your pathetic life. I'm going to take your precious eyes. Naruto hissed in a tone even more evil than Orochimaru could have mustered. He channeled Chakra to form a small blade of fire on his right hand. The shadows from the yellowish-orange blade cowled half of his face in shadows, making his dark-clad form look even more sinister. With his face half-hidden, he advanced menacingly on the already screaming Sasuke. Naruto first carved out his right eye slowly. The blade of fire cauterized the wound as it went. It popped out of its socket, and Naruto cut it off, ignoring Sasuke's screams and pleas for mercy. Sasuke fainted like one of Kankuro's broken puppets. Now this won't do at all. Naruto said in a pouting quality. He preformed a few quick seals, and green chakra covered his hand. He slammed two fingers into Sasuke's forehead, and he jolted awake. Sasuke stared up Naruto with his one remaining eye to not see what everyone else saw, two compassionate bright blue eyes. No, he saw two burning red ones that saw into his soul and passed him judgment to be damned to the ninth level of burning hell. Naruto smirked in a pants-pissing sort of way and soon extinguished Sasuke's last remaining eye. Sasuke slumped over, crying tears of blood. Pathetic piece of vermin. The blind Ichiha froze when a voice whispered in his ear. Itachi was far more of a challenge than you. He almost killed me, all you killed was a defenseless woman who was weak from childbirth a week before. Not even Itachi would stoop that low. Sasuke sobbed some more, knowing there was nothing he could do. Kill me already. Please, I beg you. Sasuke pleaded, secretly hoping the dope would grant his wish. No such luck beamed down from heaven. Oh no, dear Sasuke chan. I'm not going to kill you yet. Nope, you see, when I obliterated Odo by myself, oh, I bet that burned your Ichiha pride, eh? I found some pretty arcane and occultist stuff Orochimaru was working on. And one scroll, one very special scroll he had hidden from everyone. The way to send someone's soul, regardless whether their soul is good or evil, to the ninth level of hell. And the best part is you can send them there alive. Naruto finished in that oh so annoying cheerful chirp. Sasuke's eyes, had he still had them, would have widened in terror. He could hear the telltale swish of someone making hand signs, and he could hear Naruto whispering something. Nuo. Don't do this Naruto. I beg of you please. You're my brother, remember? The noises stopped. My brother is dead. All that is left in front of me is a soulless little imp. Sasuke screamed as he was dragged into something. It would be years before his body died in hell, and then he had the rest of eternity in hell to enjoy its delightful resorts and theme parks of death. And flashback. I showed him Itachi's head, and then I chemically neutered him, left him to stew for a couple of days, and then killed him. Ichigo frowned, darkness had passed over Naruto's face for a split second that was darker than any being Ichigo would probably ever face. There was far more to the story, but he figured Naruto would never tell, so he decided to try and lighten the mood. What were your other wives like? He asked in a politely curious tone. In a word, quirky. Ichigo chuckled as Rukia decided to ignore the conversation and lead them to the hollow siding. Anko was, by far, the weirdest, self-proclaimed nymphomaniac and deflower of virgins both male and female. But she was a virgin till I married her. She also liked to drink my blood for some reason. Call it a vampirism streak. Ichigo's eyes widened and he reddened as he pictured a leather-clad dominatrix or him licking up his blood from a shallow cut on his naked and chained form. He shivered and knocked the image away. She did eventually deflower a girl though. One of my other wives, you know. What was she like? In a single word, loud. In public she was extremely controlling. She was always telling me when to jump and how high. But in private she loved to be controlled. Naruto said, licking his lips as he remembered Ino's soft whimpers as he made love to her. I'm Sakura, I've described. Hinata was always this timid little thing. Extremely cute. But once I got rid of that stutter and boosted her self-confidence, boy did I regret it well, not really. Whips, chains, you name it, she used it. Specifically, she liked having sex in public. In fact, I'm sure that's how Niji, our son, was conceived. We named him after her cousin who died on a mission. Then there was Tintin. Now she was a surprise. She could throw a knife at a hundred feet and hit a moving target dead center. What's even scarier was that she could throw twenty knives and do the same thing. But when I married her, she turned herself into a stereotypical housewife. This surprised everyone. She cooked all the meals and used little tricks to clean up the house, even though we all pitched in. Heh, I still remember the time she dressed up in a French maid outfit for the day. I must have run out of bolts from the blue for a year after that. Damari had one hell of a temper. Before the arranged marriage, any guy near her that said anything remotely perverted would be hammered into the ground with her battle fan. But after I married her, the first book she read was the Kama Sutra. 
I tell ya, if I wasn't a ninja and healed fast, some of those things she did to me would have put me in the hospital. The Nabi was hard to place. She was a regal one, that one. Once I got the arrogant streak out of her, well mostly out of her, she looked, acted, and was treated by everyone as a queen. And she had a right to be the first clan head in her clan's history that was in the position before 18. And it was liked by both sides of the family. She was a little weird, since she was Hinata's younger sister. But hey she was an absolute minx in the bedroom. Naruto giggled pervertedly as he finished. Naruto either did not notice or chose not to notice that Ichigo and Rukia were steadily getting redder and redder in the face as he continued. It was confirmed that he was ignoring it when he said something else. I'll tell you something though. I nearly had a heart attack the first time I came home and found Ino and Anko having sex. Rukia turned around and tried to slap Naruto, but settled for kicking Ichigo who had passed out from blood loss. They stopped outside of the park. Naruto frowned when Rukia stopped Ichigo from helping that little boy's spirit, but then saw what she was getting at and let her be. Naruto however, had to chuckle when Ichigo turned the conversation around on Rukia. And boy was he right. It isn't your duty you think about when you save someone at saving that person. Naruto then watched curiously as Ichigo preformed Konso, SP. On the kid's spirit and sent him on to Soul Society. You did that quite beautifully. I'm gone. Naruto watched as Ichigo walked away. Hey Rukia why is he walking like that? I dunno. Hey Ichigo, you get fucked in the ass or something. Why are you walking funny? Ichigo stiffened in mid-stride. He didn't reply or turn around, but he did walk away normally. Rukia giggled at the antics of the two as Naruto hurried to catch up and find his body, praying QP hadn't done something weird. Late that night, Sora, Orihem's brother's spirit was devoured by hollows and subsequently turned into one as well. Naruto was having a conversation with QP inside the seal, while Yoruchi lay on top of him, purring contentedly after a bout of intense lovemaking. So you kept the fact that you're a girl from me for 2000 years. Yep. Do you know how stupid that is? It's like a badly written plot on some crappy soap opera or one of those website stories Jinta was talking about. Wink wink QB was hiding in the shadows, not letting herself be seen. So what do you look like? Out walked a tall redeed. Naruto first spotted the long, blood red and swishing tails, but then he saw her figure. She had smooth flawless ivory colored skin that seemed to glow a little in the dark mindscape. Large breasts jiggled as she walked and a head of silky red hair that parted for the two large red rabbit-like ears. She had long, thigh-length leather boots and a black miniskirt that barely covered anything being held up by a small red rope and a wrap around top, with no shoulders being held closed by a large red sash that sat under her bust, accentuating her already larger breasts. And a small metal collar was on her neck, with a chain hanging down and disappearing into her cleavage. Naruto then admired her face, angular and beautiful with whisker marks that were deeper than his own, and tinged blood red. Full, luscious red lips and red eyes completed the picture with two bangs of red hair on either side of her face to complete the picture. Whoa. Naruto whispered. QB blushed. Naruto stared and a hand rubbed his chin and thought. What are you staring at? QB squeaked in an alto voice that was like honey to Naruto's ears. I'm wondering if it would be too much of a bother to take your boots off. Naruto answered simply. Huh? QB's eyes widened as Naruto stepped through the bars and latched his mouth onto her neck. QB moaned before struggling and trying to break away. Needless to say, she wasn't very successful as a hand grabbed her rump and began to massage the soft but firm flesh, while another hand began to undo the knot in her sash. He got it undone and stepped back, letting it unravel. QB mumbled in her sleep goodnight, my precious kid. Lemon happened. Naruto woke up to find Yurichi staring down at him. I figured after what we did there was no way you could possibly want more sex. But here I wake up to find an erection sticking into me and you moaning in your sleep. Sorry. You know how I told you I found out QP was a girl. Yurichi nodded. Well, I made up for all the time we could have had. Naruto explained, a small giggle escaping his lips. Ah. Okay then. Nighty night, my little kitsune. Sweet dreams, my fluffy little kitten. Naruto gave Yurichi one final kiss before he fell into a deep dreamless sleep. Naruto watched with a rather large sweat drop on his head as Rukia read out loud from a book which was apparently in outdated Japanese because it was very formal and flowery. Would you shut up already Naruto winced and dug a finger in his ear as Ichigo yelled. You know for such a stoic SOB, you sure are loud. Naruto grumbled. Ichigo grunted and glared at Rukia, who glared back before explaining why she was reading the book. Naruto just watched, being mildly entertained by the two's arguments. That is, until the screech of a car braking got everyone's attention. Naruto and the other two ran over to see Orihim picking herself up off the ground. Did you just get hit by that car Orihim? Naruto didn't ask any questions, he did what was instinctual to him check for wounds. Maybe. 
That response snapped Naruto out of medic mode to stare at Orihim. Are you going to be okay? Orihim nodded and jumped up, her head colliding with Naruto's jaw, sending him sprawling while she apparently didn't notice. It's just a little bump on my head. Don't worry, I'm fine. I swear. She then made a weird thrusting motion that made her breasts jiggle, making a chigo blush slightly. Um, what happened? I felt like I got hit by a wrecking ball. Ichigo glanced down at Naruto, knowing what could happen if you managed to get in the way of Orihim's extremely hard head. Oh hello Naruto. I didn't know you got hit by that car too. Orihim exclaimed. Huh? Um nah, I was rushing to check on you and I fell down. Orihim smiled at him as he smiled nervously back, wondering how the hell she didn't notice that she knocked him out. Naruto got to his feet and stared as Orihim apparently apologized for being hit by a car. Rukia. Naruto had forgotten she was there, and Orihim had just noticed her. That's right. And just who are you? Naruto flinched as Rukia went into her normal personality, the cold and aloof bitch one. Not the high school girly girl cover-up one, or the real her that showed when she was embarrassed or emotional. He heard Ichigo whisper fiercely about getting her head out of her ass. Naruto grinned and muttered under his breath. Yeah I bet you know all about her ass. He realized he had been caught as Ichigo glared at him with a blush while the two girls conversed. Well now, it appears that you've been shopping. Rukia said in that sickeningly sweet and fake way she had. Orihim gasped and rushed to pick up her stuff. My leeks bananas, butter and bean jam seemed to have made it too. Ichigo blanched, obviously not wanting to even think about what she was going to make, while Orihim turned towards Naruto. You're still coming over for dinner right? I don't know how I'm. I might have some stuff to do. Plus, I think Ichigo's sisters were expecting me at their house tonight. I'll see what I can do. Don't count on me though. Orihim nodded. Then Rukia asked about the bruise on her leg. While Orihim guessed it was from the car hitting her, Naruto and Ichigo exchanged curious glances as Rukia examined it further. As Orihim waved goodbye, refusing both offers from Naruto and Ichigo to walk her home and cross the street, Ichigo voiced his opinion aloud. Damn, she needs to be more careful. What she needs is a few more brain cells. She's nice and a great girl, but I don't think anyone is home, even though the lights are on. Ichigo chuckled while Rukia stared off the way Orihim had gone. Naruto grimaced as Ichigo later explained about Orihim's brother. Hey, where are you going? It was only then Naruto noticed that Rukia was walking away. Home. Where's that? Do you really want to know? Best not. Then don't ask me. Ichigo glared at Rukia's retreating back until Naruto slapped him upside the head. What the hell is wrong with you? He yelled. What? Ichigo bellowed back. Why didn't you walk her home so she could like invite you in for some coffee? Naruto demanded. I don't like coffee. Ichigo replied bluntly. Naruto smacked his head and shook it. Honestly, his orange-headed buddy was almost as dense as he used to be sometimes. Idiot. I meant sex. Naruto explained in a shout. Ichigo reddened. What the fuck? Why the hell would I want to have sex with her? He yelled. Because you're totally into her, whether you like it or not. Naruto hollered. So what? Ichigo shot back. Ichigo's eyes widened when he realized what he had said. Naruto roared with laughter and grinned cheekily at his orange-haired friend. Told you dude. So make a move at least once before she goes back where she came from. Naruto suggested, elbowing Ichigo. Ichigo merely glared and stalked off, grumbling about no good friends who don't back him up. Naruto chuckled to himself. He was about to head home when he got a feeling he should just wander the neighborhood because something was going to happen. Ichigo sat on his bed, dismissing Yuzu's problems when he heard a rustle of cloth. He looked up to see Naruto, perched on his window, still smiling at him. He grunted and turned back to his book, waiting for Naruto to state his purpose. He heard a phone ring. He looked up at Naruto who was staring straight ahead they both talked simultaneously. Why do you have a phone in your closet you gonna answer that? They both looked towards the closet when the door slammed open and Rukia appeared shouting hey Ichigo. Both boys cried out in surprise simultaneously. Ichigo flailed on his bed while Naruto tumbled out the window. Naruto groaned outside the window, coming back to the world as Ichigo was knocked from his body and then proceeded to try and kill the hollow that had arrived. Naruto climbed back up and into the house, just as Ichigo said the hollow was Orihim's brother. Naruto glared at the floor when Rukia went on to explain the horrible truth. But when Ichigo tried to resist the truth, Naruto decided to participate. She's right. Would you rather kill one hollow that was a good man in the past or let it live to hunt down and kill or devour other good and innocent people? It's the way the world works man, sacrifice the few to save the many, all for the greater good. I know you want to save everyone, and so do I, but in this situation, in this world, we have to face the facts. That's not some man out there who's been brainwashed and can be saved, or has been drugged, or is desperate for money and is committing a crime. It's a monster that was once a man. 
pure and simple. Rukia stared, more than slightly amazed that someone so new to being a Shinigami would understand so well. But then she remembered how old he was, and with age comes wisdom. Even if he never shows it. While this was happening, the Hollow who was one Sara, retreated to the Hollow Realm to recover, and his mask rebuilt itself after being damaged. In the real world, Tatsuki was upset that Naruto was walking with Rukia, but covered herself by shouting about Ichigo, and then trying to snap Orihim out of another one of her vivid daydreams. Then they began to hear strange noises. I don't get it why would Orihim's brother attack us? Not us, you. I'm guessing there's a more powerful hollow behind this that wants to consume your spirit energy. It probably has several hollows doing its bidding and knows where you are right now. It would explain why Orihim's brother has come to attack you. Naruto decided to pitch in. So, what, there's like a big boss hollow or something? Though I wouldn't put it that way, yes. That's fucked up. Ichigo was worrying about hollows striking his family while Rukia and Naruto talked. I, I'm not sure I can kill him. Naruto looked at Ichigo sympathetically. Ichigo, you have to. You saw the pain he was in, you gotta set him free. I'll tag along, but this is your battle. Ichigo nodded and was about to leave when Rukia hit Naruto with her glove, ejecting him from his body. They picked up the pace and headed out the window, leaping from rooftop to rooftop. While Rukia was carried on his back, Naruto was hot on the substitute Shinigami's heels. By then, Orihim had been knocked out, and Tatsuki had been thrown around the room by the invisible to them at least hollow. Tatsuki could see a vague shape every now and then, but Orihim, who was still connected to her body by the chain of fate, could see it clearly and was scared stiff. Tatsuki was flung across the room and knocked out cold. Orihim tried to defend Tatsuki from the hollow as the black-haired fighter passed out. Orihim questioned the hollow, who seemed to know her. It tried to explain the truth, but when Orihim couldn't understand, it lashed out at her. Orihim flinched, but when no blow came, looked up to see Ichigo stopping the monster with a massive sword. It fled temporarily. Thank you for saving me Ichigo. Ichigo looked at Orihim, very alarmed. Then he saw what had happened, but before he could say anything, the hollow came back. It grabbed Orihim and knocked him outside. Naruto looked up as Ichigo stood on air. He was distracted when he heard Rukia's phone ring. What's wrong? He asked. Or hollows. She told him. Damn it. Ichigo. Ichigo looked down at his yelling blonde friend. You save Orihim. I got some more hollows to take care of. Good luck man, don't let me down. After getting information from Rukia, he was gone. Ichigo got knocked out by the hollow snake-like tail. While Ichigo was awoken by Rukia, Orihim learned the terrible truth that the monster attacking her used to be her brother. You're lying. My brother was a very gentle person. He would never do these things. She protested. I was so lonely. You were forgetting about me, dear Amado, a little more each day. He then went on to explain how he had watched Orihim slowly forget to pray for his soul, which made him feel lonelier and lonelier every day. And how Tatsuki entered her life and took her mind away from him, and how when she entered high school she stopped the prayers. The hollow moved off to attack Ichigo. But when Orihim shouted at him to stop, he attacked her, grabbing her in his giant hands and squeezing her. But as if Kami himself was listening to Orihim's prayers. Leave her alone you freak shouted Ichigo as he drove his blade into the hollow's tail again and again, making it drop Orihim and scream in pain. It went after her again, but Ichigo was too quick for it. He moved in front of her and cutting off its hand. It backed away the wound spurting huge amounts of black blood that completely disappeared afterwards. Let me tell you something, Captain Overbite. Said Ichigo as he turned to face the hollow. Let me tell you why older brothers are born first. It's so they can look after their little brothers and sisters. Not threaten to kill them. Even a dead man doesn't ever have the right to say that. Now he sounded truly pissed off. The hollow spoke. You don't know what you're talking about. Orihim is mine. I raised her when our parents left us. She's more like a daughter than a sister to me. Orihim, come with me now, back to when it was just you and me, happy together. It said extending its remaining hand. If you come, I won't hurt these others. Don't. It's a trick. Rukia warned her. The hollow glared at Rukia, but then spotted the hairpin Orihim was wearing. He remembered how she didn't want to wear it when he bought it for her, since it was childish. But she was now wearing it as a way to remember him every day. The hollow convulsed and screamed before shouting Orihim is mean. And attacking, only to be blocked by Ichigo. Orihim doesn't belong to anyone. And least of all to you. He shouted before throwing it back outside. He leapt at it, but before he could cut off its head, it spat a liquid onto his hands that burned and made him drop his ampakuto. The hollow charged Ichigo, ready to devour his soul. But Orihim jumped in the way, embracing the hollow's oversized head. That action stunned both Ichigo and the thing that used to be her brother. When the hollow asked her why, Orihim went on to explain how he was always protecting her, even when she never asked him to. 
Even when he was dead and that was how she got the weird bruise he had pulled her out of the way of that car. I thought if you saw I was happy, you could pass on and not need to watch over me anymore. I never dreamed I it would make you so sad and lonely. Ichigo and Rukia watched in shock as Orihim tearfully talked to her brother. She fainted a few seconds later. The hollow began to scream as its face flickered between that of the hollow and that of Sora. Rukia explained to the confused Ichigo that what was left of Sora that was human was fighting, and that he must have been forcefully changed into a hollow by a powerful hollow who wanted Ichigo's soul. And since you knew this soul in life, you hesitated, which is what the powerful hollow probably wants. Now he's fighting the hollow inside of him for his sister's sake. The hollow began to scream Orahim's name over and over again. The mask abruptly shattered, leaving only Sora's face behind. Rukia began to heal Orahim's wounds while Ichigo talked with Sora. You gave her that hairpin, didn't you? He asked, after spotting what Sora was staring at. He went on to confirm Sora's thoughts about her wearing it to remember him by. Naruto arrived back at the scene, seeing a hollow with a human face holding Ichigo's Zanpakuto to its face, and Rukia explaining that Shinigami don't kill hollows, they exercise them, allowing them to pass on. Naruto watched as Orihim bid a tearful and meaningful goodbye to her brother. He sighed, trying to hold back a tear, the scene was extremely touching. He heard QB crying inside his mind. You okay, Kaiwu chan Shut up. I'm not crying, damn it. He shook his head and watched as the hollow ended its life, allowing itself to pass on. He watched as Orihim cried on Rukia's shoulder, and Ichigo picked up his sword, looking depressed. He jumped down and clapped Ichigo on the shoulder. Well that ended well I think. There were three more halfway across town, hanging out in a cemetery, obviously trolling for a snack. They won't be bothering anyone anymore, and it's nice to know we don't kill them, but perform a nastier version of Konso. Ichigo nodded and they helped Rukia clear up the mess. She pulled something out of her pocket and used it to knock out Orihim. What's that thing? Naruto asked, tilting his head to the side. It's a memory replacement device. I wiped out tonight's events and gave her a new one. And unfortunately, there is no way to predict what her memory will be replaced by. So tomorrow, we'll find out what she thinks happened tonight. Ichigo and Naruto nodded. Naruto got a sly smile on his face as he imagined Orihim spouting off about having sex with Ichigo or something of that nature. The next day. Orihim was explaining to her group of girls about how a sumo wrestler with a gun blasted a hole in her apartment wall. While Naruto, Rukia and Ichigo stared dumbfounded by her active imagination, Naruto smiled however, when Ichigo began to talk about his work as a Shinigami. Alright, I'll help you for now as a Shinigami. But I'm counting on you. Rukia shook his hand. Unfortunately for them, the eternal pranking emperor was behind them. He shoved Rukia hard, making her scream and fall into Ichigo, who fell as well under the unexpected weight. Naruto laughed as he backed away, ready to bolt when necessary, and saw everyone else was paying attention to the two on the ground. Ichigo opened his eyes after the tumble was over, he heard a feminine muffled groan, and frowned why can I feel someone else groan. He wondered frantically. Rukia groaned and opened her eyes. She was met with the sight of Ichigo, whose eyes were inches from their own. Both of them turned dark red, but for different reasons. Ichigo blushed because Rukia's trim body was situated between his slightly spread legs. Rukia turned red when she felt something pressing into her leg in the general vicinity of Ichigo's growing goodies as they turned their heads, both of them were met with resistance. Then it dawned on them, they were kissing. They sprang apart, blushing heavily and spluttering. They turned on Naruto who was laughing hard. The blonde froze at seeing and feeling two death glares. He chuckled nervously before bolting, screaming his head off as Ichigo and Rukia pelted after him. The group of girls watched, astonished and dumbfounded at the antics. And so did the guys, save Kigo, who was grumbling about ladies' men and Chad, who was chuckling. I like Naruto's sense of humor and how he picks on Ichigo. It's funnier than a comedy show. The other two boys stared at Chad, astonished but were dragged from their surprise by a twin shout of gotcha. Aieee. I'm sorry. It was just a joke you know haha, ha, anyway you guys liked it. Right. No reply was heard, except when Naruto started screaming in pain. Later, Rukia would try to subtly use her memory replacement device on Kigo to see how it would work. Unfortunately for her, it backfired, as Kigo later announced to the whole class that while he and Naruto were eating lunch and chatting about girls, they saw Ichigo and Rukia making out under a tree. While those that had been there put it down to Kigo being Kigo, the rest of the class had given them weird looks, but it dismissed it. Or would have, had Naruto whose bruises had mysteriously disappeared, not backed up the story. Ichigo groaned as the class stared. I hate my life. He grumbled, trying to tear out a few locks of his hair. End chapter. So this part ends here. If you want to see next part of this series. Like the video now and share the story with your friends. Bye bye.